Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time, it's gonna be Randy and Clone on Desert Cliffs. I am Shadow Three Sixty Three, your commentator, and let us begin. So we've seen Randy and Clone before. Last time we saw them was an Eye of Horus, and that was one heck of a match. Actually, we've never seen them since then. Anyway, Randy going for jump bots, while Clone, on the other hand, goes for cloakies. Another jump bot cloaky matchup. Should be very interesting, especially on Desert Cliffs. These cliffs are all bot pathable, by the way, or at least majority of it is. Okay, these sections here are not mostly bot pathable. Everything purple is not pathable. There are a lot of ramps, though, and a lot of little bits between the non bot pathable sections are bot pathable, but still, jump bots do have a bit of an advantage in that regard. And Randy is actually. Nice reclaim there. So, Randy going for recon com, while. Clone goes for support com. Bob the shop. The beam laser e cell com is that before? Or he might have actually changed at this point. This is a week after the last game I showed with Clone. This that's when this was played. So he might have actually changed his commander, gotten different loadout. For all I know, though, it's still just beam laser. Anyway, Randy coming in with a pyro. Pretty decent glaive micro though from Clone there. He is making sure not to lose either his glaives. Getting too close to pyro, and that pyro is actually going to go down to these two glaives. Nicely done there. Just peppering it with fire until it gets. Finally, damaged enough that it ends up going up in flames itself. Randy, just however, getting from here to setting up a few more metal extractors. All you really know how to do is just kind of distract Clone. Clone is retaliating with the two glaives. Should point out that two glaives is actually a pretty decent harassment force. Like, it's not one glaive is scouting, two glaives is the beginning of harassment. So we'll need. So Clone will need to make sure he actually makes this worth it. And there's another glaive going around just for a bit of defense, just so Clone knows going is going on. Clone does have radar. Randy as well has radar. Randy has radar over his half of the map. Clone has radar over his corner, the southwest corner of the map. So a little bit disadvantageous for Clone at the moment. And glaives coming down here. They won't be able to lab. Okay, sorry, jumper lab. They won't be able to live that long. But they will be able to at least spot the Jumper Lab, not that that was of any concern. That was not a mystery at all. But yeah, Clone has just an auto label adding widget for factories enabled. Anyway, Clone does know for sure that Randy is going for jump bots. He's not just building his pyros off of an Athena. I don't think Athenas can build pyros, actually. Better check that. But he knows that he actually is going for a jump bot factory and not just getting pyros by other means. Whatever those might be. And unfortunately for Clone, he does have his defender just out of range of this Lotus. Not a big deal, though. He, however, does have to worry about the fact that the center of the map is being claimed very quickly by Randy. And Randy does have an economic advantage here. But Clone coming in with a bunch of glaives to try to stop this. And Randy's commander, okay, beam laser, pure beam laser. In both cases, pure beam laser. And these glaives are not lasting long. However, both the pyros going down to Clone's beam laser. The glaives, however, as well. So Randy actually suddenly getting ahead from there. Clone's commander will survive this, but he is at about a quarter health. Randy's commander at a little over half health. Considerably better off in that exchange. And Randy still has the center. Clone has not dislodged Randy from the center, but Clone is trying to just pincer this. Take the west side of the map. Okay, maybe not quite pincer. He has to take the southeast side as well. He does have a conjurer going along the south side to take the southeast and kind of try to expand around and close off Randy just to contain him a little bit. Randy, however, not going to take this line down. Does have a pyro just prepped for when this conjurer comes through. And Azus will be ready to deal with that. And I think Clone will get ahead on this one. Clone is behind economically, though. The fact that Randy did take the center is pretty important. Randy also has more quickly taken the south, the northwest side. Clone, however, the pyro is actually dealing with Azus pretty well. But getting stunlocked, going down to that defense turret, that pyro... Not able to deal a whole lot of damage and ends up being food for Clone's War Machine. Clone does have to deal with 100 more Pyros coming in. Randy is committed to 100 full Pyros, at least for the moment. And he does have, like I said, his Northwest Ridge is getting taken over by Clone. Now Clone might also take the Southeast Ridge. He should do that. And it looks like he's not quite doing that directly. He is being kind of defensive, which typical for Clone. Clone likes to be defensive. Randy, as you can see, is being fairly offensive. Or at least fairly aggressive. He actually has been pretty polite so far, but he has been aggressive. And that is paying off. 22 to 14 metal. 33 to 18 energy notwithstanding. That's just because. Though admittedly, the wind generator is on the high ground. Definitely useful. But Randy is ahead economically. Clone is... He's getting some reclaim. He has a good field of reclaim to work with. That's going to be handy. 
but at the same time, he's not quite so good for static economy. And he hasn't actually been reclaiming all this stuff. He's starting to reclaim it. He's starting to take over the section. But it's still, Randy does have that center. He hasn't pushed out directly from the center, though. He's starting to consolidate on it. He has not actually built up any forces other than, well, his pyros. But, I mean, given that the pyros are pretty heavy units, there's only, you get one for two, 220 metal. It's kind of difficult to make a large army of pyros. Especially having lost a lot of them. However, these glaives are going down to the pyros. The pyros going up the hill and going to be able to get through them. Losing one pyro in the process. Clone's micro has been magnificent this game. I mean, four glaives with three pyros and the glaives, one survivor killing a pyro. That is excellent. Given the cost and relative power. Clone is doing a wonderful job of keeping those glaives alive and getting rid of those pyros. However, Randy at the same time is still pushing those pyros heavily. And the economic advantage is pretty close to closed. Clon has managed to rebuild, well, not rebuild, he has managed to build up the south, getting parity on economy from metal, we're very close to. Energy economy is still in Randy's hands, though Randy does have a much stronger energy economy, which will translate into overdrive once his energy is full. Not quite yet, but it soon will be, within the minute. And this Contra, however, is going to go down for free. Quite, these Pyro's doing a lot of damage, and another Contra goes down for free. None of these pyros have been killed yet, and a lot of this economy going down as well. One of the pyros does go down finally. Clone does get rid of one of those pyros. Two of those pyros, but one escapes pretty much unscathed. So overall, not a bad raid. Clone going for a counterattack, however, trying to get rid of Randy's commander, and will he succeed? I don't know. These pyros moving in to get rid of the Zeus's, but the Zeus's do have the advantage. They stun lock the pyros. They're going to be in good shape, but those one of the Zeus's does go down, and the other one... Able to get rid of the Pyro, but has to retreat. So, the Pyro is... The Pyro is strong here. Randy does have a strong base in the Pyro, and he is making sure that Clone does not get the Southeast. So, Clone right now is no longer got economic parity, lost a couple metal extractors, and Randy slowly inching forward into Clone's base. Just cutting the center. Might take the Southeast side, and if he does so, it's his game. But Clone could counter. He could start to harass the Northwest... And if he gets rid of Randy's commander, that actually won't be trivial. Admittedly, the pyros are still a bit of a problem, but if he gets rid of Randy's commander, that's four metal and six energy out. And the center... Okay, the center is quite well defended. There's no point trying to deal with that quite yet, unless he gets a bunch of Roccos, which is not happening anytime soon. He is, however, getting some hammers, which will help. The Zeus's, however, are starting to fall behind. The Zeus count compared to the pyro count... Zeus's are more expensive too, but yeah, Zeus's have no splash damage. They're great counters to Pyros, but they don't have splash damage, and the Pyro's moving in for another attack. Clone has to deal with this once again. Randy loses another Pyro, but he is moving in, and Clone about to lose his commander, or his commander taking heavy damage, but two of the Pyros going down, three of the Pyros, four of the Pyros, five of the Pyros. All of the Pyros have gone down. Randy lost a lot of Pyros, and now his commander taking pretty heavy damage, and another Pyro coming in to finish off one of the Zeus's. And deal... Once again, more damage. I mean, there's quite a bit of damage dealt to the defenses. Clone lost a lot of his defenses, and Randy is slowly inching forward. He's taking advantage of the economic advantage he's had for most of this game. He is still militarily ahead. But another power goes down. Clone does not really have this field, though. This field's kind of no man's land, and no man's land being this close to Clone's base is not healthy for Clone. Not in the least. He's trying to push out. He's going to succeed... If these pyros go down, that's the important thing. One of the pyros does go down, and another pyro is taking damage. Zeus getting repaired in the meantime by Clone's commander, but it's taking a while to repair it. So, unfortunately, Clone not quite able to get back in here. He hasn't decided to attack the northwest, though. A bit surprising. That would be a great angle right now. His defenders are not that strong. Just send in... Okay, glaives would be the best choice. Looks like he is massing quite a few glaives, but... Yeah, send in... I don't know, a few rockers, I guess. Or even enough glaives, I mean, get rid of the defenders. But yeah, hammers are starting to push back, but I doubt that's going to be of much threat. I think Randy's probably going to push in with the Pyros pretty soon. He is re regrouping with the Pyros, not retreating, just regrouping. I mean, these defenders are pretty much just target practice. Doesn't much matter. Looks like Randy continuing along with... Oh, actually getting a placeholder on top of these Pyros. That is going to seal it, I think. It's going to be very difficult for Clone to get around this. Randy, I should point out, does have radar coverage of the entire map, basically. Clone, on the other hand, has radar coverage of all but this northeast side. 
And that northeast side is very critical, actually. I don't know. I mean, Kluin can't really take advantage of... Or can't take any knowledge there. He cannot. There's no way. Randy would just kill any radar that tries to be set up there. The best he could do would either be a vulture or possibly sending glaives over there, maybe. Kind of tricky to do, though. So I doubt he's going to try doing that. Actually, what he might try to do, although I doubt it, is build an eraser on top of these glaives and send the eraser and glaives along the side and just harass the back here. Because the eraser, I mean, that cloaks everything. That would be handy. I don't think Clone, Clone does not have the energy for that, though. He needs he would need to have about twice the energy income to make that work. But if he did, that would be pretty powerful. I doubt he's going to do that, though. That's never done in 1v1. I just would kind of like to see it. It would be kind of neat to see it at some point in a 1v1. Anyway, we will have a Pyro Glaive match. And Randy is actually taking the southeast. He decided to go for that. Pyros and Glaives. We have seen Clone do a great job micromanaging his Glaives. But I think at this point, there may be too many to deal with these Pyros. And the Pyros just torching through all the Glaives. The Glaives have to retreat. That is not going to go well. And Randy at this point, securing the southeast side of the map. Clone also has to deal with the fact that the south, the northwest is getting harassed. These Pyros are going to have a field day. Tearing apart everything. These Conjurers have no chance whatsoever. One of the Pyros does go down. But even with that... It does not matter. The Lotuses will go down soon after. Actually, another Pyro is not quite going to go down. Does survive, and that entire northwest side is gone. Kloon loses all of that at the cost of one Pyro, and the southeast side has been claimed as well. Randy is taking a lot of territory right now. Not sure what Kloon is planning to deal with this, but one of the Zeus's is going to go down. Or might go down, actually. Even stunned. It doesn't make a big difference. Gets rid of a Pyro. The cost of its death is still a pyro. That is still not cheap. Now that being said, I think... See, Clone is setting up some hammers. He's trying to get rid of the defenses over here. Unfortunately, one of the hammers is too close. Gets killed by defenders. And the other one also too close. Just barely, though. I think... Oh, yeah. It's the range. Just barely in range. That hammer does move away. Is it... No, not quite in range. And that its range is pretty much identical... Oh no, his range is actually bigger than the defender's range. I'm a bit surprised then. I'm a bit surprised it is not going in there. That being said, he has to be careful. Because he doesn't want to lose the hammers to that. And Banshee's coming in. Oh, how did I miss that? There's a gunship plant with Banshee's coming in. And this is... This is just huge. I, I mean, I'm... I commend Clone for staying in this. He is showing a valiant effort. But unfortunately, his commander goes down... Banshees and Pyros rip apart the south side after losing the northwest side. I don't know what Clone has planned. He is moving a bunch of glaives over to harass the northwest. Looks like he's going to try to go for a backdoor assault on Randy's base. But at the same time, front yard being damaged, but ultimately destroyed. The Zeus is able to stop the Banshees and Pyros. Giving Clone a massive, reca massive wreckage field. Massive reclaim field. Massive wreckage field. Because I feel like mixing two words. Reclage. Massive wreckage field. I don't know. Anyway, going, going for this harassment around the back. The Banshees are going to be taking a bit of flack from the Glaze, but not all that much compared to the amount of damage being dealt to them. And Clone, paying attention to this, getting rid of... Well, getting rid of a couple of powers, but losing a lot of Glaze in the process. He needs to get rid of the Caretakers. That's the big thing. Get rid of the Caretakers, and that will mean Randy's economic advantage will mean nothing, or little. It'll mean something. There's still 20 metal being poured into all this. But that'll reduce the effect. And this Glaze does manage to get rid of the last metal extractor at the last second before its own death. As well as all the caretakers, that's a much bigger story. So right now, Randy will be able to build up, building up caretakers around this reclaim field to take it. But he doesn't have any caretakers at his main base right now. He's building another one. It'll be up in about 30 seconds, but for the meantime, not that it really matters though. There isn't much that can be said. I mean, Clone, yeah, he took out the caretakers, but he's still taking a lot of damage. West side of the map taking a ton of damage from Randy's forces going along the west side. Faraday in place to try to stop these pyros, but even with that, not going to last too long. The Zeus works because it has the damage along with the paralysis, or the EMP rather. Faraday just has the EMP, and that's not going to help him out too much. This Banshee, however, for some reason just resting on the ground while it's getting attacked. It lost the will to live. As did the other one. A little odd there. But anyway, Randy does have a Stinger up. Protecting this reclaim field, very much taking it. Getting a couple of caretakers, actually, to claim that field. And Clone, on the other hand, not actually reclaiming it yet. I'm really surprised. Why is Clone not reclaiming this? This is a massive wreckage field. These two conjurers are completely idle. And he has enough of it within his own territory. He can start to reclaim it. I mean, he can't reclaim all of it, yeah. 
but he can reclaim quite a bit of it, and he is down by a factor of three. That is huge. Even with the Caretaker Destruction, that harassment earlier didn't actually do all that much, ultimately. Defenders are starting to go down, though, and these hammers are taking a bit of damage. Oh, right. Actually, Swordtail pointing out that the defenders up here, there is a range penalty for attacking from low ground. That is true. That is a true statement. The defenders are in a advantageous position terrain-wise. Should have pointed that out. A little hard to tell on the range circles, though. It is actually possible to tell on the range circles, but it's kind of hard to view them while... Ah, eh, whatever. Anyway, the point is, that's true. Defenders are in a great spot right there. And Randy going for a Cloakie Factory, Proxy Cloakie Factory, just to finish this off. Gonna set that up and go for the kill with that. Although, at this point, the Pyros are taking some damage from the Hammers as they approach, getting softened up by them. Two of them go down, actually, for nearly free. The Hammers do not take any damage from that. Banshee's getting targeted by the Hammers, but that's not gonna do much good. Like I said in the previous game, pretty much anything can fire at air, but not a lot of it can necessarily hit. Zeus's can definitely hit, Hammers can definitely not. Maybe against Crows, maybe. At that point, I don't think it would matter. At that point, Hammers are just not the right response, period. And Hammer up for Randy! He's going for Hammers of his own on this Cloakimod factory. Same time, he is still building Pyros and Banshees. Does have a Caretaker up. Not sure how much going to matter, though, because his... Pretty much split. He is pretty much split his resources between all his factories. So I don't know how much it's going to make a difference. Stinger does go down and... Or will soon go down to the Hammers. Soon after, the Caretaker will go down, but like I said, it doesn't matter all that much. I mean, it matters soon. I mean, Randy is getting 34 or more metal. These Caretakers, the biggest thing is going to be to print Reclaim. Which they aren't actually doing, surprisingly enough. Neither... Okay. Okay, Clone does have a Caretaker for the sake of Reclaim and partially for Repair. But that... Ooh, not quite goes down. Now it goes down. That Caretaker's gone down. The Hammer's going... Dealing quite a bit of damage, and Banshee's coming in to deal with all the hammers. The Zeus is trying to get rid of them, but not in time. All three of the hammers do go down. Flun has no artillery left. He does have some Zeus's, one of them getting place held in the air. Which, luckily for it, means it's harder for it to be attacked, at least by the hammers, but not by the pyros. Goes down to the pyros without dealing much damage. Glaive's coming around back to get rid of these, and not a bad ambush there, but still not enough. Damaging Randy's commander, but not killing it, and good placeholder there. <sighs> this really is not going in Clone's favor. I don't know what Clone really has to deal with this. Maybe going air and trying to just bomb this out. Get a couple Phoenixes and just burn this whole thing to the ground. Bit of a tricky choice, though, because after that point, you'd have Archangels coming in from the Jump Bot Factory. But there would be a short period in which that would allow himself to go around there. However, even with that, I don't know. Randy's gonna lose his commander. That is, or no, not quite. Retrieves the commander. Nicely done there, but yeah. A couple of Phoenixes might do the trick. I mean, if he burns this out and then he has a window of about a minute or so to start burning out the rest of this stuff and try to reclaim the map, even then the economic advantage is huge. Really, the best thing that Clone can do is try to just reclaim as much of this field as possible and then push that all into Rocco's, Zeus's, and I suppose some Glaives for harassment. There is some defense in the main base, but not all that much. If a couple glyphs got in while the pyros were all out of base, that actually would be fairly effective. Like, four, five or six glaives? Deal with the Lotus? Get rid of all this rest of the stuff? That would actually work out. But I don't think that clone's gonna go for that. That's a lot of metal being spent for an attack that's... that might work. Compared to setting up his defense to try to make sure that he can stop this cloaky factory from existing. Still taking a while, though, and clone... Nope, he's focused on Caretaker into his factory into more Zeus. Zeus Glaive Hammer. That is his unit composition at the moment. Not sure why he's continuing along with that. The Hammer I can see, the Zeus I can sort of see. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't gone for Rocco's though. Just because they, I mean, they do decently well against Pyros. They can at least. Rocco's, however, are what Randy's going for, and that's gonna work out actually not that well. The Glaives are coming in. There's enough support with the Pyros, the Glaives can't actually do much damage, but that's, that's just Pyro support. But still, Randy does have that. That's the thing. Randy has a lot of support. A lot of support on the ground. And actually, apparently I'm not the only one who's decided that that would be a good idea to go for... Oh, no, yeah, Phoenixes. Pointing out Phoenixes would be a good idea as well. Yeah, I, I agree. Phoenixes would be a good idea, but that's not the way things are going right now. Right now, Randy is pretty much just able to build up. He hasn't actually reclaimed a lot of this, though. That's the only thing. That's the curious thing. And Clone, while he has been reclaiming a lot of this, has stopped. 
He stopped reclaiming. There are a bunch of Banshees along the northwest side, and I think that Randy's just gonna go for a flank. Within the next minute, he's just gonna go for a flank. Everything's gonna attack, and I think that... Not even a minute, now! Yeah, within a minute, within 10 seconds. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. So Banshee's coming in from the north. At the same time, we have a bunch of Pyros that are attacking from the south, and the Banshee's coming in from the north are, well, pretty effectively dealing with this. Getting rid of all the wind generators, getting rid of a bunch of everything, really. Getting rid of everything inside Glowin's base. A bunch of Glaives come in to try to deal with this. They're going to kill a Banshee. Maybe. Maybe one. Not all of them, and no, actually none of them. None of them go down, and the Banshee's able to tear apart. Okay, one of the Banshees is going to go down to the Lotus. Not even that. Never mind, not even that. Getting rid of this factory, and I think Glowin's going to just throw in the towel. I think that'll be game. So, a bit less dynamic than the last game, the one and I have Horus, unfortunately. That was a little disappointing, but still a pretty good game. A lot of good demonstrations, especially good demonstration of Glaive Micro against Pyro. That was amazing. Just how cost-effective those early Glaives were for Clone. Just, unfortunately, did not manage to keep up with the Pyro numbers. I think Rockos probably wouldn't have been a bad idea. Zeus's aren't a bad idea against a few Rockos, but against a large number of them, they just aren't cost-effective. They have no splash. They can't really deal with them effectively. They don't hit them often enough. I think Rockos are a better counter. I'm not 100% sure. At any rate, that is going to be it for me tonight. So I hope you enjoyed that. And that's it. So have a good night, everyone. Thank you for watching.